pastime of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are practically incomprehensible to Ramanuja Charja and Madhva Charja. Srila Guru Maharaj said when he was <coughs> in the southern part of India, he saw one copy of the Bhavisha Purana mentioning the Madhva Charja and Ramanuja Charja approached Mahaprabhu, although it's historically impossible, spiritually speaking, it's possible. This is in Dham Mahapyam Bhakti Thakur presenting things that are historically impossible but spiritually possible because spiritual consideration allows for the contraction and expansion of time and space. So we can impose from a limited perspective is non vaikuntha impositions on the Vaikuntha plane. How is this possible? How is that if he lived here or that all these things are meaningless when it comes to uh, conscious substance. <clears throat> there in the world of the immeasurable world, the means of measurement is the inverse, dedication. In the world of exploitation, there are a lot of different ways to measure things. Capitalists have a way of measuring, economists, strata, whatever. They're always measuring, because this is the world of measurement. But in the immeasurable world, the unlimited Vaikuntha world, if we were to say, what is the standard of measurement, it has to be uh, a unit of consciousness. There's so many units of things here. There it's a unit of consciousness. What kind of consciousness? Generic consciousness? No. Dedicating consciousness. That's the means of measurement. It's here in the morning. For other times I see people, they're sweeping. Mandap, the mandir, all the, everything's being swept, and you see these brooms. They're sort of old style brooms. Now we have digital brooms, <laughs> high tech. Here you see, it's composed of so many straws. So. At the conclusion of one of his works, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he says, he signs this as Bhaktivinoda the sweeper in the Nam Pata Nityananda Prabhu. This means that it's an entirely spiritual conception, the Nam Pata. The, the marketplace, the bazaar, where this holy name is being distributed. So who am I, if I am to have a position there as a sweeper, he identified so many, uh, so much chaff, sampradayak chaff, that needed to be swept away, sahajya sampradaya, etc. But then I see myself in that way. And Srila Saraswati Thakur said that if Bhaktivinoda Thakur is a sweeper there, then my position, aspiration, would be to be as one of the straws in his broom. He's brooming them, and I'll be a straw in that broom. That would be my aspiration. So Srila Guru Maharaj said, <clears throat> if what he is expressing is not just being clever, it's not a witticism, it's not a witty statement, 
you know, a clever repartee. Then I'll be, said, but if we take it, that what he's expressing is actually heartfelt. It's sincere, what he's saying. So then we can understand the unit of measurement of the swarup, of the identity and that higher plane. This is the unit of measurement. The inverse, not ostentatious displays of achievements or feigning devotional sentiments, but the inverse, finding oneself in want, lacking, devoid. Devotion is always expressed in the inverse. So, <clears throat> What made its way into the pages of the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Krishna's Kaviraj Goswami is the ultimate agent there, broadcasting what is here. He has given vent to this expression, Jagai Madhai Hoite Muise Papishta this is the land where Jagai and Madhai were <coughs> forgiven their offenses. And who are Jagai and Madhai? It's a little difficult for us to understand because of our background. That these men are taken to be the two greatest sinners of the day. It's when we measure their activities to our own, we see, we don't think of them as being that bad. <laughs> but at the time, in that context, they were considered to be the two greatest sinners of the day. <clears throat> and Kaviraj Goswami, he, he's saying, he's the author of Chaitanya Charitamrita. I am more sinful than they, and I'm lower than the worm in the stool. Although this is couched in poetic language, it's not very pleasant to hear. But there's something special <coughs> to be extracted from this. As the person who's presenting the greatest spiritual literature that's ever seen the light of day, in the opinion of Srila Gurmars, in all time and space, all creation, this, is that. He's saying <coughs> is the greatest sinner and lower than the worm in the school. So, but he's presenting this. So, a uh, few things to be learned. One is, he has no doubt that this is the highest thing, the highest conception of reality ever to be before. But at the same time, when he considers himself, it's in the lowest position imaginable or beyond imaginable. Srila Guru Maharaj points out that this is the, the effect of him coming in connection with the deepest plane of the highest plane. That automatically these sort of sentiments are venting. We hear so much about humility, tolerance, but this is coming as a natural, it's not a feigned position or a posing, but it's come as a natural response to conceptual depth. Just as we go to the top of a mountain and being there, all of a sudden we're overwhelmed by feelings of insignificance, automatically. Standing on the shore of the ocean, looking into the sky, so many things that are great or representational of the infinite, they bring about this sort of sentiment. In the, so we can say, in the proximity of greatness, automatically 
feelings of humility descend, flood the heart. What to speak of being in the proximity of infinite greatness. That there are gradations of theism. So his level of exposure to <coughs> spirituality, <coughs> the spiritual conception, there's nothing greater than that. How can we say that? Everyone can say that. Our, our, my God can beat up your God. My scripture is better than your scripture. But within the realm of Veda, which is the original revealed truth, there you find indications that are pointing in the direction of a particular conception of the ultimate reality, Raso Vaisa, that is not limited to the fatherhood conception of Godhead, but sonhood, consorthood, Akila Rasamrita Murti, all conceptions of loving relationship find the, the epitome of their expression and reciprocation and the Krishna conception of divinity. That, that, that Krishna himself wants to embrace this position is revealed in the pages of the Chaitanya Charitamrita. So Kavaraj Goswami beginning by saying things. What's been described in the Upanishads and the Vedas in this way and that way Really, Mahaprabhu is its fullest expression. This is controversial. So Guru Aurangzeb mentioned Madhva Charja and Ramanuja Charja approach Mahaprabhu according to the Bhavisha Purana and say, why? What we gave is being modified. They know they're dealing with reality. And now some modification is being given of a deeper, fuller conception of the reality. They want some explanation. He says, Mahaprabhu answered with some mystic sloka. And they were silenced and went away. But here, <clears throat> as Srila Gurudev was mentioning the other day about the Koracha, or the notes of Srup Damodar. Srup Damodar is described here as Mahaprabhu Ditiya Kalevara. Mahaprabhu the second, his second self, his other self, whatever way you want to interpret this, for all intents and purposes, he is to be conceived of nearly as Mahaprabhu, Srup Damodar. But Srup Damodar is somehow <coughs> maintaining his composure to assist Mahaprabhu by supplying appropriate uh, slokas and songs to either bring relief to the depths of separation he's experiencing. Radha Bhava Duti Subodhikam Nome Krishna Sarupam or to augment those sentiments. And we hear Das Goswami is the next agent. Srup Damodar, Raghunath Das Goswami, Krishna Das Goswami. When Raghunath Das Goswami came to Mahaprabhu, he was put under the care of Srup Damodar. So he accepted that. But after some time, he approached Mahaprabhu and said, actually, you know, I came to be here with you, and I want some personal instruction. Sometimes there's parallels to this, and someone really comes to Krishna consciousness, they're told you'll serve under this person, and half the time they're thinking, no, I want some personal intimate association. I came to you, and you told me to work like that. So he's also saying something like that. So Mahaprabhu, gave him some personal instructions. He said, but <clears throat> the reason 
I put you under the care of Sruth Dominar was not that I didn't think you were fit to serve me personally, but actually what I don't know about Krishna consciousness and serving me, Sruth Dhamadhar knows fully and I want you to be that level of servitor, therefore I put you under his care and guidance. And we can think, oh, he's flattering. How can, what I don't know, he, you know. But it's also possible that it's a sincere expression. If we take it, that Krishna, by his own admission, can only theoretically understand the position of Srimati Radharani. Again, it's mentioned here. He cannot estimate it's beyond the infinite's capacity to fathom the degree of her devotion. That's mentioned here. Can't fully estimate that. The, the limits. There, is, there are no limits to that. And he himself wants to embrace her position. Sometimes we hear from Srila Guru Maharaj that when this news came to Radharani, she was uh, apprehensive. Why? She knows what it's like to be herself. And she knows that at the, the greatest, you know, the, the zenith of separation experience, the sort of devastating effects that has. So to think that Krishna, we're told his lotus feet are so delicate, the gopis fear that holding them will, will bruise them. That Krishna is going to be plunged in the depths of Radha her separation from Krishna, and be rubbing his face against walls, crashing to the ground. She can't, that, that will happen to him is unimaginable to her, so she thinks, I will cover you with my self, and that way protect you. So, Krishna descends here with these, with three internal ideas in mind. Bahirangam Kore, Namasankirtan, Antirangam Kore, Rasa Ashwadam. His public service, Guru Maharaj calls it. His service to the public, public service, right? Namasankirtan. When public service is finished, in his private life, Antaranga Bhakta. In their sangha, their association, Swarup and Ramananda, behind closed doors, Rasa Ashwadam. He is relishing that, tasting that. So, uh, saying that. Oh, so, when he's. Who can assist him best? when he is in this terra incognita, this is a domain previously unexperienced to him. He can observe that in her, but it's new domain to him. Totally devastated. And we hear in the Rathyatra, dancing before Jagannath, different types of dancing, the Udanda Nritya, where he's jumping like this, but the Tandava Nritya of, of De devastating dance. There are three types of dance here. Mentioned. That's at the Ratyatra. We see he's lost in his madness, but Srub Damodar maintains his composure and is supplying songs, slokas. Nityananda Prabhu is spun off in divine madness, Advaita, they're not helpful at that point. <laughs> But Srup Damodar, ever the servitor of Lalita Saki and Vrindavan, Radharani is plunged in the depths of this separation, can support, supplement, augment, bring relief. Gadadhar Pandit also, why? Gadadhar Pandit is 
Radha Rani herself. As in Guru Maharaj is so good, Nilam Bodhi, Tate Sada, Sudiraha, Kepan, the Tam Bandabam, Srimad Bhagavati, Katam, Adiraya, Sanjilayan, Bhatiya. He has reached the position, the last stage of separation, of tempest, death. Then the death stage brought back to life by Gadadhar Pandit, selecting choice slokas from the Bhagavatam, supplying them like intoxicants to relieve the pain of separation. So Gadadhar Pandit has that qualification, but so does Rudamadhar. And Mahaprabhu was telling Das Goswami, I put you under his care, some special things that I don't know. So we can understand, yes, lost in that divine madness, he does not know. But this other person, Sri Bhagavadar, is eminently qualified to assist at that time Das Goswami is put under the care of Sri Bhagavadar. And although his former position, materially speaking, was so exalted, Indra, Aishwarya, Shama, he had wealth like Indra, Apsara Sri, his wife, who was like a goddess. Uh, he left all of that. And on account of this internal absorption, showed a type of renunciation externally. It's just painful for the devotees, the hero. It's so extreme, it's bewildering. But it can only be on, it's not that he's trying to show this to impress people, it's on account of internal depth that there's the least uh, necessity of dealing with anything here. And we hear when he, at one point near the Jagannath Temple, when he first arrived there, being the son of a rich man, he crossed state lines. That's why his family couldn't bring him back. When he escaped Bengal, went to Arisa, when he crossed state lines, they could no longer bring him back. He left here, what, in something like 72 hours, he walked there, running, walking, drank or ate something three times. It's superhuman, it's totally mad. Therefore, the father told the mother when she thought, how can we, you know, bind him? You know, maybe they'll just chain him to a, a column, a pillar. He said, he's got the most beautiful wife in the universe, more money than all his. If we can, if these things don't bind him, what are some chains going to do? He said, for someone who's become a madman for Mahaprabhu. That's what it was. He heard about Mahaprabhu, and that madness broke all the chains of material existence. That conception entering him broke all the bonds. That's the way this works. The concept enters and all, all the shackles break. Vidite hridaya vrantis, chityante sarva samshaya, chiyante chasya karmani mai drishte atilapnadi. I extend the conception of myself to him. It enters his existence, and everything else becomes tasteless uh, in comparison, by comparison. So that Das Goswami, they, in the beginning the family thought, they, when they got news, he's in Puri, they sent some money. And he felt a little awkward about that, but then, oh, Vaishnava Seva. But then in time he thought, this isn't right. Then he started living by begging in front of the Srinadwar. And then he thought, I feel like a prostitute. And he, oh, this person might give something, no, they probably won't that. And he felt embarrassed about that. So then we're told there was a place where they threw out spoiled rice. And cows would eat that. But then what they would not eat. He started taking that, and then there might be some little area in there that he would take away the other one, a little bit, it's edible, and that, and maybe a little salt, and like that. And when Mahaprabhu asked for some news about him, gradually 
this came to his ear. So with Srub Damodar Krav, he went there to find Rayanadas and he is eating that. And Mahaprabhu said, I hear you've been having feasts and not inviting me. <laughs> You're having these opulent fees, but, and just for yourself? <laughs> I'm not, I used to be on your guest list. <laughs> and Das goes home and says, this isn't fit for you. And they forcibly pried his hand open and Mahaprabhu started eating and he said, I've never tasted anything like this. And I've tasted all kinds of prasada. After all, he is God himself, right? He's eaten all the, whatever prasadam never was, he's tasted it. But I've never had anything that's so nectarine as this substance. So what that means, the whole thing, beginning, middle, and end, is not something external. It's all kind of, this is an extreme example to underscore that point. It's not what you can see with the eye or the ear or taste with the tongue. There's something else. Jai Hari Prabhu He. Jai. That was What can I say, Prabhu? Hari Chandra Although this was his intention, 
when he met Rupa and Sanatan, in them he felt, oh, Mahaprabhu and Sukhdam, they're here. Again, I'm feeling what was from them, I'm feeling it here. So, and they don't, no need to leave this world, you can stay with us. But that Das Goswami, who's showing so much uh, vairagya externally, still he is composing many works. The Mukta Charit, the Govardhan Astatam, different things. And one very important book, that Vilapa Kusumandu. So, you can give to them. Anyway, this book, what he has written, we can say, in the spiritual world, Vrindavan, sometimes Guru Maharaj will say, Raja Gopi, they're posing this half-educated, half-civilized jungle world. But we find when they appear in Gaur Leela, with the Goshamis, they're writing literature that implies the complete mastery of Sanskrit, Puranic knowledge, Vedic knowledge, everything in, these, in their writings. So that Das Goswami, although he's written many confidential things, Srila Guru Maharaj pointed out that Srila Saraswati Thakur, some slokas from there were very dear to him, one in particular. He said, vibrating them. When, when he would vibrate this particular sloka, we could understand he looked very much at home. When he would vibrate the Asha Avarayri, the Sindhu Mayuka Tantra, said, he looked very much at home. Now he's in his own place. And the amount of emotion that came from him, he said, was like a fully pumped football. <laughs> like there's a, a limp football, but there's a fully pumped. But he said at that point, he was fully blossomed, fully pumped, and filled with emotion. And although generally he meticulously did not display any kind of emotion, when he would recite this verse, sometimes he would cry profusely. Others will take many other verses from there that are confidential, that are this, that, to give the public some idea of their exalted level of spiritual achievement. Saraswati Thakur, the sloka that moved him most, is about a service aspiration. Sometimes his face became like that of a phantom when he was surcharged with the serving current that Das Goswami has expressed in this sloka, which is saying, why am I, why do I live? What is the reason for my existence? The French have an expression, raison d'etre, means reason for being, reason for existing. Why do I exist? But because in my heart I've been nurturing an aspiration for the service of your holy lotus feet. It is this direct prayer to Radharani. And so as Guru Maharaj pointed out, that service is described by him as Amrita Sindhu. Not just a nectarine substance, but an ocean of nectar. In another place, Prabodhananda Saraswati says, Bishwam Purna Sukhayate. And we don't see that the, the world is full of soup. 
We connect with an agent, Stan Ace Gitan, Shruti Gitan, Paruman, Pano. What do you hear from them? Jide Swarupai Krishna. You have another identity, substantially, in the spiritual world as an eternal servitor of Krishna. And that prospect, the, you know, the seductive charm of that prospect, to impel one to offer themselves in service, to make it meaningful. What's the time? 1.40. Is there any other question? I have a simple question. Yeah. Very humble, maybe stupid. When we hear that we have another identity in the spiritual domain, yeah. does it mean that it's there right now and also here this misconceived identity and we are not focusing properly or it's, just will be transferred? It's, it's dormant. It's like so many things we see here, they exist in a dormant stage or a seed-like stage and under certain conditions they come out. Gurudev is initiating some devotees today. What is the tone? Ramanda Brahmite Gona Bhagavan Jeev Guru Krishna Prasadi Pai Bhakti Lata Beej The seed of this concept, prospect is transmitted from the agent, the substantial agent, into the heart or consciousness of that person then through Shravan, Kirtan, it's nourished. So it's there, but dormant, it's not being expressed. Because what is there? There is a plane of consciousness. It's all dedicating consciousness. So by, when we spoke earlier of Saraswati Thakur's expression, saying, I'll be a straw in the broom of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, that kind of Consciousness, the servant of the servant of the servant, these are the units, the cumulative units that the sarup is constructed of. So this serving potential is lying dormant. It's there, but dormant. It says elsewhere in Charitamritam, Krishna Bhakti Nikti Siddha Sadhya Kabunai. It's not, uh, there's nothing that creates this. But there are certain things that bring it out, that augment it and develop it. Bhaktya sanjataya bhaktya. From the devotee can awaken devotional sentiments within one. But they're there lying dormant. Right now they're being pervertedly expressed towards exploitation. Coming in connection with the agent, there's a restructuring of consciousness, of dedication. Then it starts to manifest. The, Layers that are covering it, karma, jnana, right? Karma, anya, vilashita, shunyam, jnana, karma, jnana, vrita. Rupa Goswami is saying, what's covering the svarup? Layers of karma and jnana. As they begin to dissolve, the svarup starts to peak. And the experts can say, Saraswati Thakur would sometimes engage with the ruchi pariksha, he would examine the spiritual taste of his disciples. But these were highly evolved personalities. So he started seeing, because the layers of karma and yang covering that form, keep, keeping it dormant, started to dissolve. And certain genuine, substantial spiritual tendencies started to vent and express themselves. So it's like that. Guru Maharaj Chit world and the Achit to God. This is the Achit, the unconscious world. The Chit Jaga means the spiritual world. How can the Chit person move and navigate in the Achit world? He introduced the concept of Chit Abbas, a shadow of the spiritual self, enables one to navigate this world. What is the shadow? mind, intelligence, ego, etc. They're shadowing. The shadow envelopment of the soul. That's why so-called meditation 
or anything. They say, well, this helps co concentrate or focus the mind. You know, the mind is a mundane element. That, that, that is not Krishna consciousness. Bhumir, Apo, and Lovayu, Kamano, Bhutirevacha. All of these are mundane elements. Earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence, and ego. It's not that you recondition your mind uh, uh, to think about Krishna or images of Krishna or sounds of the names of Krishna and it becomes spiritual. No, these are coverings. They have to be eliminated to allow the expression of spiritual mind, spiritual intelligence. There's a big difference. Sahajya, their idea is reconditioned mind, train the mind to think of the form, hear the sounds, think of the path, and then uh, it's like, uh, I compare it to the Stanislavski acting method, the Russian god of acting, tell people, if you think of this one character, dress like them, think like them, walk like them, talk like do everything like them, then one day you'll have an epiphany and realize you've become them. Which is great for Hollywood, but we don't want the Hollywood version of Krishna consciousness, right? where you can imagine yourself into a particular role of a servitor. That's not what it is. It means self-sacrifice, self-dissipation. Goromar's example, that chandan stick you've seen in the morning and they always have a grinding stone, put some rose water and take the chandan and rub it. You know, there's some uh, elbow work in there. They're rubbing that and what is happening? It's dissipating. It's becoming smaller and smaller and smaller. And what's happening? It's transforming into its essence, which is this fragrant sandalwood pulp that's offerable to the deity. So, through self-sacrifice, self-giving, the mundane coverings dissipate, dissolve, vanish, and then the spiritual golden self comes out. It's there, but covered. But our awareness of that prospect comes through association, come in connection with an agent, and then you realize hearing Substantially, it says, Stani Stita Shruti Gatam Tangvan Manobhi. It means Stani Stita, it doesn't matter what your situation is. In one fell swoop, all situations have been dismissed as being irrelevant to the presence of this substance. They're all irrelevant. Don't waste your time considering them. When you connect with the agent and hear, Krishna conception. That concept enters the heart and establishes its presence and ultimate supremacy. And gradually the other things vanish. And the experts, Srila Guru Maharaj said, when Mahaprabhu tells Ramananda, all the things he suggested up to this point have been dismissed. But this is the first thing that Mahaprabhu accepts as being substantial. He's saying, yes, at this point, they're, they're a goner, it's just a matter of time. Because the Krishna conceptions into the heart, today, tomorrow, it's a given. That, that Krishna, put it this way, you know, Maya is not afraid of any of us, or anything you can do, or any posture you can take. But, she's shy to come before Krishna. Someone who's absorbed, accepting responsible service in Krishna consciousness, why a little shy to take them away? If they're just sitting around doing nothing, she doesn't have a problem. <laughs> but if they're really absorbed in Krishna consciousness, even, I mean, she has, you know, they're busy. Come later. So, she's shy to be in front of Krishna, afraid of Krishna, but not afraid of any jiva or any posturing jiva. Devi Eshagunamai, Mama Maya Dharataya, 
माओ में भी एक प्रपद्यन थे माओ में तो हम पूरा करते हैं इसे यू सुबह ने मेरे से टेकन केयर ऑफ देवर्स नो अदर मेथड एवरीथिंग एल्स इज सुपरफिशियल और इन टर्म्स ऑफ डीलिंग विद द सेंसेस टेम्पररी एट बेस इट्स वेस्ट ऑफ टाइम एंड एनर्जी सेम बट सुबह ने मेरे She is one of my humble servants. That's your only hope. But you're told from the beginning. It's the beginning of Mahaprabhu's teachings to Sanatana Goswami. He's saying, "Why am I suffering in this world? And this, that, and there's so much anxiety." He's saying, "You're the eternal servant of Krishna. It is." What's wrong? What is that? But you don't ever say, "Be no bully, hi hi, Hari Das, Hari Nahi Pai." But you know, saying, expressing our position, "I am the eternal servant of Krishna, and Krishna is nowhere to be found." What is my problem? I can't find it anywhere. I am the eternal servant, and I'm blind to Krishna. My, my ego, that I am that enemy, not others. We're the biggest obstruction, so we have to be eliminated, so to speak. Self oblivion, but not self extinction. Self oblivion means lost in something. That type of absorption, right? That you know, the, the, the great artists, writers, thinkers. You know, this businessman, politician, anything—they're lost in what it is they're doing. That's where they discover themselves. The finest aspect of the self is discovered in self-forgetfulness, not ostentatious self-absorption. <clears throat> That's the ultimate fault of Maya. They can give up everything except one little thing. I'm God. Can't let go of that idea. But devotees are the, they're lost in seva. That's where the swarup is revealed. Utterly forgetful, and then the self comes out. Self-forgetfulness. That's higher than self-sacrifice. Self-sacrifice is still some concept huh? of what I'm sacrificing. Self-forgetfulness. That's what is shown by these great devotees. That's what Das Goswami is saying. Is here. I have no other reason to exist than to serve you. That's my heart's aspiration. It's not saying to have some big position in the spiritual world, but be famous as a devotee. So it's easy to say these things. We're just repeating what we've heard from them, but we see traces of that here when someone is so, you know, in romantic love. The early stages of romantic love. Where people they're so totally absorbed in the other person they lose their identity and they're confused who is who and so many and they, all they can think of is doing even the least thing for the other person you know and that lasts for like you know 16 months <laughs> you're lucky <laughs> and then people just conclude oh I was young I was, you know no I mean I mean the what that doesn't exist anywhere except for that little mundane you know, time frame. That's pathetic. It, it doesn't exist anywhere except you know in a book, uh, a play, or in someone's life for a few moments. No, it does exist. In the Vaishnava Padyavu is saying, "Prati anga." Lage kande prati anga more. Who is that person who can reciprocate with every atom? Every atom of the soul's hankering. Okay. Not just you know uh, compatibility. You know, 
matchmakers.com. Plug in your, do a Google search for the love of your life. You know, for your eternal master. It's, I mean, it's laughable. It's like, this is what people are doing. Right? Highly trained, skilled, educated professionals are doing a Google search for their eternal companion. This is the modern world. Right? Is that it? Computer will find your love. The Lord of your heart can be found with a cray blitz. <laughs> or not, well, if we put a whole bunch of them together. <laughs> not just one. I mean, we have to connect a lot of them. Right. Quality, Gurmaj said, quality brings us relief from mathematics. Think about that. Quality brings relief from math. I always want to know how to get out of math. <laughs> and now he's told. Quality brings it. That means, the, that's what we're talking about here. It's always Gurmaj about quality, substance versus form, the quality of the thing will bring relief, you know, Natevitu Svartaka Dem Hi Vishnu Durasaye Bahir Arthamanina Bahir We're thinking the substantial thing is in the cover. It's on the inside. Here are the people, they were uh, husking rice. Did they do that already? I think so. So the rice is in there and then there's the husk. We're taking empty husk and eating it and getting nothing. Except what, you know, uh, like pain of having done that. That's what it's compared to. Jnana, karma, dhyana, rupa, goswami, say, these are the coverings. Don't waste your energy on the covering. Go for the substance. It's worth sacrificing your entire self for. You'll be shocked, thrilled, beyond your wildest dreams and imagination, what comes to you in return. It's not based upon your present estimation of who or what Krishna and Krishna consciousness is. We haven't even properly conceived. But still, the prospect should be enough to Break away. Jai Suparikar Shri Shri Guru Gorana Gandhara Govinda Sundar Guru Ki Jai Vishnu Pada Guru Mahanta Parivara Dha Chara Dasa Tursa Shri Shri Raj Shri Bhakti Sundar Govinda Dev Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai Vishnu Pada Shri Bhakti Raka Shri Raj Dev Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai Shri Rupa Nuga Guru Varga Ki Jai Nama Chara Dasa Hari Das Thakur Ki Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shiva Sri Gaur Bhakti Vindhi Jai Radha Krishna Gopu Gopna Shamsam Radha Kundi Gopadam Ki Jai Vindavan Dam Ki Jai Navadim Dam Ki Jai Shri Chaitanya Sarasvak Mark Ki Jai Shri Gaur Shviraham Milan Samadhi Mandir Ki Jai Ganga Devi Jumuna Devi Bhakti Devi Tulsi Devi Ki Jai Om Vishnu Pad Vishnu Varina Shri Sivaki Dhan Shamar Prabhupada Ki Jai Jai Sri Pad Ban Maharaj Ki Jai Sri Pad Bhakti Vivana Dhu Maharaj Ki Jai Sri Pad Hari Charan Prabhu Seva Ketan Dhu Ki Jai Seva Vrinda Ki Jai Seva Vrinda Ki Jai Seva Ki Jai Nithai Go Premanande Jai 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 and the northern and southern divorce. <laughs> Many from Latin America, they're the southern divorce. And Siberian devotees, northern divorce. <laughs> what a divorce. World divorce. <laughs> <laughs>